Tyndenega has a long history of involvement in media and communications technology. Beginning in the early 1980s, our community built IBM-compatible PCs, developed local networks, and programmed software to meet community needs. My first interview, I hate this stuff. <laughs> I'm always the guy who sits in the background <laughs> making things work. Uh, f and I got into the manufacture and sales of PCs because what they found was that um, none of the education counselors on the reserves had a computer, knew how to use them. Um, so they then started teaching, uh, building and selling computers and teaching people how to use it. And that's how our, uh, our, uh, the small computer training got started. At the time, a computer system cost six to eight thousand uh, dollars because they were new and there was only a few manufacturers. So they partnered with a um, importer, a local importer, who brought the clone machines in, and then uh, we had Peachtree Technologies. They assembled, tested, built the machines, sold them out for you know one or two thousand dollars less than the going rate, and so they were able to get that technology into their offices. And the next part, once I got it. We showed them how to use it as well. From 1987 to 1997, we ran computer training programs, teaching people how to use their new office computers. We even created our own software programs, including one for Indian Affairs called the Post-Secondary Information System. INAC wanted uh, student records. They wanted accurate student records on the accounts of students uh, that the educational uh, counselors were funding. So we wrote a program that did that. They typed in their information and every month they do the reports and either modem it up if they had modems or mailing disks if they didn't. A modem was what before the internet. Uh, people used to connect to each other via a modem and bulletin board systems. We had a bulletin board system up here too. And that's how they would, they would call from their office computer to our BBS, upload their data. We could compile it into our master database and get all the stats and everything and then send it off to INAC. Uh, up to that point, the band had no internet access. They didn't have any. They had no email, they had nothing. So we built um, a, a machine out of uh, parts that we had laying around to enable them to have it for really low cost. Um, again, uh, internet was fairly new back then. It was expensive, so instead of uh, and no one had any training on how to set it up and install it and maintain it. So we handled that for those, for those organizations and they helped pay for our data line. Those uh, 256K lines cost us $600 a month for our access. So what we did is we pooled, they, we built the service for them, hosted their email for them as a service. They paid us to help and we split the cost amongst all of us to pay for the access to get the line into the building. So our, our office was a gateway for the whole reserve. 